state researchers say the employment picture in Oklahoma is looking a little better. Unemployment sits at about 7.5%, down nearly a full point since last month. That fact offers little consolation, though, to the 114,000 Oklahomans who are still out of work. It offers even less hope to the full two-thirds of those people who have exhausted their employment benefits. In fact, for most of those people, the only hope right now is to be moved from the unemployment rolls to the welfare rolls. Changes in the benefit laws passed in the latest session of the state legislature will ease part of that problem, but those changes won't go into effect for another couple of years. With the passage of that in 1986, when the cap is floated and the weeks are extended, then eventually we will have the, the system set up. I think the system is now set up, but it'll be 1986. The system will be set up in 1986 to get the people that are drawing unemployment after those claims uh, to get the longer amount of week. The best long-term solution is a healing in the job market. Industrial employment is gradually increasing, but for recovery to be complete, other employment areas will have to absorb the nearly 50,000 jobs that have been lost in the oil and gas fields. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4. It was the acquittal of an Enid couple in the death of their child that sparked a controversial change in the state law. The couple belongs to the Church of the Firstborn and had refused to seek medical care for their son who had appendicitis, seeking a spiritual answer instead. An exemption to the Child Care Act based on their religious faith saved the couple from being convicted of manslaughter. Lawmakers were stunned and modified the exemption to include only medical cases that did not constitute a threat of permanent harm to the child. An assistant attorney general says that change and other changes regarding child welfare in Oklahoma reflect a national trend. I have contacted um, the Oklahoma Bar Association child welfare specialists and the division on child neglect in Washington, D.C. and various states uh, from Virginia to New Mexico and uh, California. I find that it definitely is a trend um, nationally. And I think that there are three new laws going into effect in Oklahoma shows that it also is in this state. One of the other laws that goes into effect on the first requires that children traveling in cars must be restrained. But the law does not allow any punishment to offenders. It only allows an officer to issue warnings. And now police will have to report missing children to state and federal officials within three days after they disappear. That bill was pushed through by the families of two young girls who disappeared from the state fair a few years ago. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4. Oklahoma City officials say it's time to change school zones around town. First by flashing zone lights on busy streets only when children are going to and from school. Second, to have school zones in effect 24 hours a day, seven days a week in residential areas. Here signs will be posted advising motorists to slow down when children are thought to be present. And finally, the city is proposing to discontinue speed zones around Votech schools. Although the changes would be welcomed by motorists, it's students who should really benefit. What the Traffic Commission is really interested in doing is increasing the safety of the school children. The way to increase the safety of school children is to inc increase compliance with the school zones and make people more aware of children crossing. In years past, most proposed school zone changes met constant opposition. But this time, the city council has the support of school administrators, and not much public disapproval is expected. Ed Stewart, Action 4. The three-year limit on Japanese imports was supposed to help domestic dealers stay competitive. The quota is due to expire in March, but now Detroit is asking for an extension of the quota. Predictably, import dealers are hoping the government will allow more of their cars through this time. But domestic companies say the real issue doesn't concern volume. According to an Oklahoma City dealer, the free trade system is the heart of the problem. 
stringent import tariffs in Japan make their market unfeasible for American companies. Basically, I don't like uh, trade restrictions. I am one who would advocate free trade. However, uh, we are, find ourselves in a situation where the markets overseas are restricted and ours are not, and therefore uh, we find ourselves in an unfair advantage. And I think we're going to see more and more restrictions taking place if some of the, uh, the restrictions overseas aren't lifted. Import dealers and industry analysts concur. An extension of the quota system on imports would raise car prices and narrow the field for consumers to pick from. But government leaders may feel it is necessary in order to put the beleaguered domestic auto industry back on its feet again. Kevin Ogle, Action 4. This car is a good car, but it's just... instructions to follow and a diet you need to follow. There are applicators inside for collecting assessments. Eckerd pharmacists and representatives were on hand today at Western Electric to hand out free hemocult tests. The tests, which are being provided by Action 4, Eckerd Drug and Presbyterian Hospital, can detect colon cancer in its earliest stages. Fill out each section completely. The turnout was overwhelming. Eckerd set up a table with 1,000 of the test, figuring that would surely be enough for the three-hour seminar. Well, within 45 minutes, the tests were gone. Gone to Western Electric employees who are concerned about their health and the health of their loved ones. They know that this test can save their lives. What we want to make clear is that it's a test for blood. It's not a test for cancer. But that blood that appears in the stool can be a symptom of colon cancer, and if it's detected early, it can be cured. You don't have to be a Western Electric employee to get a hemocult test now. Anyone can pick one up for free at any Eckerd's drugstore. If you have questions about taking the test or about colon cancer, you can call the Presbyterian Hospital hotline at 524-2029. Remember, the test can save your life and it's free, so pick one up today before it's too late. Sherry Sellers, Action 4. We have had cases in the past where offenders were uh, participating in sexual activity with employees, and I even saw uh, charges of rape. But if you get into concerning adults' issues, uh, there is no legislation currently that would allow me to bring legal charges against that employee. Frequently, someone who knows that they're in an investigation will just quit. cost. We've all suffered through the flood of the fall of 83 and trying to find two administrative positions into one. Again, Jim, in the options that must be considered by all universities range from the elimination of faculty positions, drastic reductions in salaries, recommended major tuition increases, the elimination of degrees and programs, there is no question that higher education in Oklahoma would be set back many years in progressive development if funding cuts continue. Would be set
go back to work and work. Well, that's the best. All you have to do is just sign the poll book, but you are signing an affidavit that you are registered in that school district and that you are registered with the Oklahoma County Election Board. Now, if you vote illegally, you are subject to a $1,000 fine or 30 days imprisonment. Live in the district. There are registered voters in the district. All counties are like this. So when they sign that, they are saying basically what? Right. And basically, the state law does not provide for a regular poll or precinct registry. Like most college students, Toddy from spends a lot of time studying. It's not unusual for Todd to crack the books for 15 hours the night before a big test. However, his intense study habits have not placed him on the dean's list. Todd has a learning disability called dyslexia. His brain transposes letters and numbers. He must work four times harder than his classmates in order to make average grades. It's not really a question of overcoming, it's overcoming it. It's a question of compensating for it. You, you, it's just like for every one hour that you'd put in studying for a test, I'd put in three or four. I'm just average student trying a little harder than the next guy to make the grades. <laughs> I show the child a flash card, a big card with a word on it. Educational psychologist Dr. Dale Jordan says 15% of school students have dyslexia. He gives students a simple spelling test. Those with dyslexia have trouble spelling common words. Dr. Jordan says children are usually glad to have their disease diagnosed. In most cases, Scott, the child is so relieved to know that he's not stupid. That's the first reaction. Gee, I'm not dumb. Something else is the problem. That we usually get a surge of self-confidence. You know, just immediately he says, oh, well. And the parents uh, get off the child's back because now they realize that the child's doing his best. Dyslexics can use typewriters and computers to help them overcome their disability. However, there is no known cure for their disease. They'll just have to work a little harder than the rest of us. Scott Wallace, Action 4, Northwest Oklahoma City. When people think of environmental problems in Oklahoma, they think of areas like Tar Creek or a number of toxic waste sites scattered across the state. Oklahoma undoubtedly has a history of neglecting its stewardship role when it comes to natural resources. And it comes to little surprise to many environmentalists that a national conservation group gives Oklahoma a low ranking in environmental planning. I think we're smart enough and well prepared enough to avoid future Tar Creeks. Rick Jamison of the Oklahoma Wildlife Federation says the criticism against Oklahoma is not that the state destroys what it has, but rather that the state has no plans to preserve it. We're getting a handle, we're beginning to get a handle on our air and water pollution problems, but we're not doing a very good job in terms of protecting wildlife habitat, uh, providing enough open space and recreation land, uh, preserving critical areas such as wetlands and prime agricultural land. Jameson says that unplanned growth has stripped the state of much needed farmland and other natural resources. The state expects another million Oklahomans within the next 20 years. Jameson says that with planning, the state can accommodate that growth without losing any more resources. Charles Schnetzer, Action 4. For months now, the people gathered in this room have been diligently passing the hat for a good cause. The United Way helps out 45 separate agencies, and each year the organization calls upon the public and the business community to give their fair share. 
The goal this year, $6,298,000. A tough order to fill considering the still tough economy. And there were some tense moments tonight with no one in the room sure if the goal would be met. As each one of the 14 separate fundraising committees shared their accomplishments, the totals were tallied up. Almost all of the fundraisers brought in their fair share. Still, there was doubt until the very last moment when chief fundraiser Lee Allen Smith announced the grand total. You have heard reports the total six million three hundred thousand thirty-one dollars. The final tally again, six million three hundred thousand dollars. One hundred percent of the goal. Dan Slocum, Action Four. Oklahoma City Zoo, unfortunately, has one of the worst facilities for housing their apes. Uh, they are archaic. They are more akin to uh, the worst of prison conditions. I think if Judge Bohannon were to look at our facility, we'd be under his uh, leader, his caretaking takership. Close to 5,000 people were advised to get gamma globulin shots in early September when health officials confirmed that three food handlers at this sonic drive-in in Marietta had contracted infectious hepatitis. The disease quickly spread to three other restaurants in town. By the time the Love County Health Department had the outbreak under control, at least 100 confirmed cases of hepatitis had been recorded. Now at least 20 of the hepatitis victims say the restaurants are responsible for their illness. That's what the doctors indicate, that the permanent damage uh, is really substantial. And they said it... Today, two of the hepatitis victims, along with their families, met with an attorney in Ada. Lucretia Graham is suing Pizza Hut and Sonic for more than $300,000. She alleges the restaurants put her life in danger. My nephew, who had ate at the Pizza Hut, came down with hepatitis. And so when I started showing the same symptoms, well, I immediately went to the doctor, to the emergency room, and the doctor immediately from the emergency room quarantined me in isolation in the hospital, diagnosed with hepatitis. Attorneys Greg Saunders and Harold Hall of Ada are representing 20 people who claim they were infected at the Marietta Sonic or Pizza Hut. Saunders says he is convinced one of the restaurant's employees knew that he had hepatitis, but continued to show up at work anyway. As far as the Pizza Hut's concerned, uh, we have former employees that indicate that the manager knew that he had hepatitis and continued to come in to do such things as perform inventories, to check up, to close, and to do functions that would require him to be around the food that's being served to the general public. At least five more people are expected to file suit against the restaurants next week. No one from the Marietta Sonic or Pizza Hut was available for comment. In Ada, Kurt Autry, Action 4. The final decision came after months of dire predictions of what shortfalls would mean in the state. The loss of funds in public schools, for example, could mean a loss of four to 5,000 teachers and support personnel. Educators say that at best, classes would be overcrowded and at worst, some schools would close. In the state's colleges and universities, the cutbacks would mean laying off faculty, dropping programs, and turning away more than 8,000 students. Roads and highways would go unrepaired and the state would be unable to qualify for millions of dollars in matching federal aid. Governor Nye did not quote those statistics, but he mentioned those areas as ones where the state had made great progress in the past five years. He said the new theme for his administration would be to preserve that progress. During this past session, I resisted and have continued to resist as long as possible the consideration of an increase in taxes. I think we have no choice. 
I did not become governor to preside over the demise of progress in this state, and I delayed the consideration until I was convinced that even though our economy is on the rebound, even though unemployment is dropping, it is not rebounding as quickly as possible, as quickly as I would like to solve this year's problem. Governor Nye would not outline any specific tax plan. He says that he wants to confer with House and Senate leaders to make sure they can come up with a plan that all of them believe that they could pass. Whatever tax plan the leadership agrees on, it will probably have to be temporary, though. Many of the legislators we talked to said that they will not accept a new tax if it lasts longer than 18 months. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4, at the State Capitol. Be aware that uh, Mr. Supple, the owner of this place, and it just goes on ad infinitum. End up court anyway, it seems to me. So my suggestion is. Some people, as long as that little patch of ground is okay, they're not going to vote for anything that's going to help anybody else or any of the public and capital improvement. Uh, because their loyalties are not like that. And you're not going to change them, don't care what you do. We but if this does give assurance to some certain people in the city, what's wrong with it? Okay. What's wrong with it? And, and none of us, uh, 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 it is the nearest thing that we can do to put forth a good faith effort for the people. I think the ERA will be brought back up. It will pass. It will become part of law. Um, those who voted against us today will find out in 1984 that we're going to work very hard to replace them. The task force was formed after a woman died in this boarding home during last summer's heat wave. Five other residents were hospitalized with heat-related illnesses. The House Human Services Committee is looking into the problem. Last week, the committee heard from state agencies which oversee boarding homes. Today, the legislators listened to a handful of room and board home operators. One homeowner said he hoped there won't be a backlash against all operators because of an isolated tragedy. I had uh, a Department of Health inspector in every day, a mental health inspector in every day, a DHS inspector in every day, was concerned about the temperatures. Whenever there was an emergency, a problem, and somebody died, well, everybody got concerned. My point is I hope it don't go from the left side to way out here in the right side. 
Conspicuously absent from the meeting were boarding home operators who have had their licenses lifted by the state. Committee members are considering whether to subpoena operators who have had heat-related deaths in their homes. The House Committee plans to call on the directors of the state health and mental health departments to its next meeting. Lawmakers want to hear some suggestions from those state agencies about how to solve some of the problems in Oklahoma's room and board homes. Scott Wallace, Action 4 at the State Capitol. And I asked the municipal councilor to look at this very question, and he, it was his view that that is a legal uh, way of doing it. Obviously, if it's not, why well, it can't be done? But uh, we're, we're satisfied that it is legal and that you can make distinctions like that, particularly under this kind of a, of a provision. If you can exempt commodities, surely you can exempt people. I mean, in fact, if you exempt uh, beer, if you exempt cigarettes, if you exempt all these other things that has been done by the state, and certainly you can make some exemptions among, uh, among uh, other people who make these purchases. So That's one of the reasons for the special session is the, the sense of urgency. If you came in session in January and you could do it, you know, you're going to be there until May, there's no, there's no sense of urgency. But the other hand, I mean, the other reason is that if we're going to solve this year's programs, and this year's problems, rather, if we're going to solve this year's problems, we have to be in session now to generate funds to solve this year's problem. If we wait three months, we haven't accomplished much.
This maximum security facility for women is not exactly the place you think of first when you think Fun Run, although these women change that today for a reason, to stop child abuse as best they can from behind bars. About 75 female inmates Don Sweats did the best they could to stretch out those muscles all too used to confinement and gave the course their best shot. Correction officials estimate 70% of all Oklahoma inmates were abused themselves as children. I think their problems stem from that, and uh, they're becoming more aware of that, and I think this is a good thing. Each runner secured pledges before the start of the race. After that, it's up to her to run as many laps as she can. The money will go to Oklahoma's parents' assistance centers. Oh, they're about to kill me. I knew I couldn't do that many laps, so... I had to give me a whole boot of sponsors to make in a showing. You know, there really aren't any losers out here today. The winners are those who are participating in this race and the kids that they hope to help. Terry Cook, Action 4. If we see the need for additional state revenues, then we'll go a little deeper into it and probably spell out where we think uh, those uh, revenues should be derived. Uh, we have preferences when it comes to taxes uh, and about where they'd be placed.